Hi everyone. Today we're going to learn about the earth. Specifically, we're going to learn about what are some outside factors that affect the earth. Before we start the lesson and the experiment, I'm going to start you guys off with a demo. Let's watch this and see what's happening. What do you guys think is going on? So, that was pretty cool, right? What did you guys notice? Besides me getting a whole lot of exercise, you guys saw that huge, huge bag actually start to float and start to rise, and it looked like it was gonna fly away, right? 
It was held on by a string so that it wouldn't fly away and I could bring it back down. But how did that happen? It's the power of the sun. So the sun, something that we all love, gives us a lot of energy, helps plants and trees and grass and what you see behind me, all of that be able to grow. But the sun also has the power to give us a lot of heat. What happened there was the heat from the sun was making the air inside the bag so hot. And when things like air get really, really hot, they actually start to float. The bag was really, really light, so it made it really easy to float. Now let me ask you this. Do you think the same thing would happen if I was in a shady spot that was really warm? Would that work? I wonder, think about that. Now today's lesson, what I wanna talk about is the power of the sun and how we can protect ourselves from that. Well, I have some items here that we may use for protection from the sun, right? Sunglasses, protect our eyes. Might wear a cap to protect your face from the sun. Clothing, right? T-shirts or long shirts that we might wear that will protect us from the sun. My favorite, sunblock that we use to protect our skin from the sun. And then there's some other things. I wonder, will it work, right? Like a piece of paper, can that help me? What about water? Does water help me, protect me from the sun? What I have here are some really, really cool beads. These are, we got another fresh, these are already changing. Yeah, another set. So I have some beads here that are white. Now these are color changing beads. They actually detect the UV rays inside of the sun and they will change color when they detect the UV. So we're gonna do an experiment and we're gonna test to see which of these objects really protects us from the sun. So I'm gonna get a brand new set and I'm gonna take one, let's try to make sure it's not in the sun. I'm gonna rub sunblock all over it. See, does sunblock really help us block the UV rays? Coated it really, really nicely. And then I'm gonna set this up where I'm gonna have just a little, one of these um, bracelets with uh, rings on them. And then we'll place it in the sun and see, can we see the color change. Now we have our items under the sun and let's give it a second or so. Oh, we're not quite under the sun. Let me move it further back. Let's take a peek and see what happened to each of the items. Let's first look peek under the hat. Kept it pretty white. You guys see that? I'll quickly bring it up close to the camera. A little bit of a color change, but that's because I wasn't holding it well. Pretty white. What about under the t-shirt? Let's move the camera, that might be easier. Oops. Also pretty white. What about under the water? Oh no. Not white at all. Those have changed color. I can see the orange, the yellow, and the purple. What about under a piece of paper? Let's see if we can take a peek. That's also pretty white, not bad. Now under the sunglasses, Hard to do this without getting sun in there, but not bad, right? 
which one was the darkest? I would say the one in the water. Now what about the one with the sunblock? Did it change color? A little bit, right? So the sunblock worked, but not perfectly. The UV rays still came in there. Let me get another one and put it in the sun and show you guys how quickly it'll change color without anything on there. You guys see that? That was really, really fast. Can we compare that to the sunblock? You guys see the color difference? Which one's whiter? Definitely the one under the sunblock. That was pretty cool, right? These UV beads can actually detect the UV rays from the sun and they change color. The ones that had no protection change color. And you can see now they're turning back to come somewhat of a white color again. Why? Well, I'm in the shade now, right? So these UV beads will go back and forth color to white, color to white, depending on if I'm in the sun or if I'm in the shade. The one with the sunblock did a fabulous job. Blocked out most of the sun. This actually did the best. Stayed pretty white. The one under the cap. Oops. The one under my cap stayed pretty white. That was nice. The one that was under my shirt stayed pretty white. Really nice. And even under the sunglasses, did an okay job. Not bad. Some sun still got in there. And under the paper was not bad either. What was the most surprising was the one in the water. If we look close, the one in the water, and I've still been in the shade, but that's how much the UV rays affected these beads. They're still colored even though I'm in the shade. How much longer will it take for them to come back to their normal white color? Does the water protect us from the sun? No, not at all. So whenever we're swimming or we're in the ocean, whatever you're doing, that's when you need the protection from sunblock, right? Now, we don't have these beads at home, but that's okay, we don't need them. For the next part of this activity, what I want you to do is I want you to do an engineering exercise where you actually build something that's going to protect one item, and I'm gonna tell you what that item is, what that item is from the sun. The materials you can use are anything you have available at home that you don't need. Only rule is you may not buy anything. So you can use a cardboard box, paper cup, maybe a bowl, maybe a plastic plate, or even a container that you don't need anymore. Really whatever that sometimes we call trash or recyclables. You can use some scissors and some tape. And what I want you to do is I want you to build a little structure that's going to keep an ice cube from melting for as long as possible. So after you have built your structure, you're going to put one ice cube, you're gonna need two ice cubes. You're gonna put one ice cube on a table or on a flat surface in the sun. And then the other ice cube is also gonna go right next to it. But the only difference is one of them is going to have your structure that you built on there, right? So this is not my structure, but let's just assume it is. And we're gonna cover it. And we're gonna look and see which one takes longer to melt. If they melt both exactly at the same rate, exactly at the same time, did my structure do anything to protect my ice cube? It didn't. But if my ice cube melts slower than the one in the ice, than the one in the sun that without any protection, did my structure help? It did, right? Get creative, look around your house, make sure you ask permission before you use any items, make sure your parents don't need them, the adults in the house, make sure that they give you permission and they are um, watching you do this and I would love to see what you create. Good luck guys.